as continuation to avro let us talk about some more features how they are implemented like reading the data objects writing them uh, how do i use datum writer datum reader or encoder how do i use various services of avro and what will be avro file format how internally the file is represented let us see some of these concepts now specific api in the previous session i have defined something called as a string pair as a record which is consisting of two strings one is called as left the other one called as right now i was writing there the java code in order to maintain what if i have a specific api in order to maintain the same thing here i have taken example from the textbook uh, which is written as a mavm project object project uh, object model so i have used the same model and given you the example they are trying to maintain the string pair under maven plugin the same thing if at all i want to maintain not with maven but i want to use a avros and task which will try to write the same thing it almost is similar to uh, java syntax so you can try to write the same kind of object definition using this one this is avros and task which uses various types of objects and coming to how the data files are maintained generally uh, whenever you are attempting any kind of uh, theory exam generally they will ask explain avro data file format so maybe along with features of avro you might need to see how the data file looks like right i will talk about the data file first let us look at data file introduction this is the format next i will show you how does it look like so avro's object container file Uh, the format is for storing sequences of avro objects so here everything it is going to store will be in the form of an object as i told it goes with json notations it is very similar to design to hadoop's sequence file format so difference is avro data files are designed to be portable because they it has to support various languages so if somebody has written a file which is written in python they can very well try to read it using c language now what does the data file contain the data file has a header which contains metadata including avro schema and a sync marker followed by a series of blocks containing the serialized avro objects and followed by a series of optionally compressed sometimes we might go for compressed data sometimes not compressed so this is just optional compression is not mandatory here so what does it contain the header first data file contains header which contains metadata including the schema and a sync marker as i told if at all we are trying to uh, split the file into blocks we will have sync markers to know where does a block begin and it contains all the serialized avro objects and blocks are separated by a sync marker which is unique to every file the marker is a particular file is found on in the header and which permits rapid resynchronization with a block boundary after seeking to an arbitrary point in the file such as an hdfs block boundary what for these sync markers are used for resynchronization purpose what do i mean by resynchronization i want to go to a specific block how do i identify just go to the block following the sync marker take the data and you want to come back to your previous block so the markers will help you to go for resynchronization right thus avro data files are splitable which makes them for efficient usage by map reduce processing because map reduce is totally based on splitting a huge file into blocks and go for parallel processing so if you try to put that format into a diagram it looks like this avro file consists of a header and 
various blocks are there what does the header contain the header contains schema it is containing before schema it contains a 4 bit ascii code and it also contains 4 bytes am sorry it contains a 4 bytes ascii code followed by the metadata of the file in the metadata what do i have avro dot schema the avro object schema definition will be there apart from this avro dot codec stands for coder and decoder if the data is compressed which compression mechanism are we using that coding and decoding mechanism will be specified here are we using crc32 or are we using the revised version of crc32 or any other compression mechanism you are supposed to maintain the codec and decoding mechanisms should be maintained here crc32 is for actually error detections here you can use compression mechanisms which mechanisms are we using we have gzip various compression mechanisms so you can specify that so the metadata includes the schema as well as the codecs if at all you you are using compression if i am not compressing the data this codec will be absent apart from schema and compression data what else is there if you see 16 byte sync marker this will help me to know where does a block begins for next block again you will have a sync marker which becomes ending marker for the previous one right then header these are the contents contents and then what is block 1 block 1 are the individual data blocks they contain how many objects are there count is specified here and what is the size of serialized objects in the block this is specified in bytes apart from that the serialized objects here you are specifying count size and what exactly are the serialized objects and block ending sync marker this sync marker is for the entire set of files and where every block is ending you are going to specify 16 byte sync marker at the end of every block so this is how avro file will be maintained and writing avro objects into data file it is similar to writing a data stream into a file using java concepts so i have just put the example a uh, piece of code which will help us to understand how are we going to write data into this just go through this code once so whenever we are writing the data uh, the schema of the object must be matching with the data we are trying to write if they both are not matching whenever you are trying to append you get an exception and whenever you are trying to store the avro objects all of them will be maintained in a file with extension dot avro so the file will have an extension dot avro and once you write the data you would like to read the data you want to access the data so this is the piece of code which will help us to read the data from an avro file containing serialized objects just have a look at this one so if you go through this this is the piece of code which will help me to read through the file why i have given this is you can also use the concepts of asserting that both the schemas are same all these assertions can also be done so i thought this should be just shown to the students for understanding we can do this type of coding also and interoperability we are trying to work with various types of languages you cannot be sure that Uh, the person who is writing the file and the person who is reading the file are using same language background in order to access the data items so in such cases avro takes care of interoperability so if you see the example this entire thing is used uh, python language in order to write avro records into a data file which is writing the language pairs right or the string pairs i am using the same string pairs it is trying to write data into the file and python code is used in order to write data into the file
So, try to understand the code. We are trying to import schema, we are trying to import the IO operations, we are trying to work with the data file. So, same comparisons if number of arguments passed is not equal to 2, it should generate an error message and terminate the program execution. Otherwise, we are working with datum writer and trying to write the object into the Avro file. Then, before we can run the program, we need to install Avro for Python. So, just install that. After installation, you can try to execute this. And once you are trying to read the data or executing the program, it is trying to show what are the string pairs that have been written into the file. And whenever it reaches end of the file, it will try to show it with control D marker. Similarly, you can try to work with Avro tools to display the contents of pairs of that. Simply, I am using the Java jar file to execute that particular program. The program was written in Python. I am using the Java jar file command in order to execute pairs.avro. The file has been written using Python into Avro file and the same can be accessed using Java which will help me to show who is the leftmost string, who is the rightmost one. If you access this, if you see A1, C2, B3, B2, I have written into the file. I am accessing the same file using Java, A1, C2, B3, B2. So, the same pairs are coming. So, this is how uh, when you are trying to write an Avro file using Python, and somebody wants to access through Java, it is possible. We say Avro is supporting interoperability, which is a very powerful feature supported by Avro. And schema resolution, we have to learn something called as schema resolution, which is very, very important when you are learning the concepts of Avro. Just go through this. At times, it is possible that the schema which is present in the file may not be exactly the schema what is expected. I want to access say for example, uh, student number, student name and marks in three subjects, but I do not want to put it in an ar array. Marks in three subjects, I want them to be individual variables. That is how I am expecting the schema. But the person who might have maintained the file might have given student number, student name, marks in three subjects, they might have maintained it is an array in a file. So, the, scheme, the values are matching, right? Student number, student name, marks in three subjects. What is the expectation? I want the marks to be in individual variables. That is the expectation. How is the data maintained in the file? Maybe the marks might have been maintained in an array of three values. So, sometimes it is possible that the schema which is present in the file may not exactly be the one which we are expecting to read. What is schema resolution? Suppose the versions of both read and write of data are different. Then, records may have had fields added or removed. Here there are two things, uh, the versions are not matching or sometimes uh, I am trying to work with the expected schema is not the one which I am trying to work with. So, we have already called something called as schema resolution. So, we are talking about the same thing, schema changing, right? So, suppose the versions of both read and write of data are different, then records may have had fields added or removed. Basically, the schema which we use to write the data is what we call the writer's schema or the schema what the application expects is the reader's schema. Try to understand this is very simple for us. I am expecting my 
marks values should be individual variables. So, I thought initially they were using individual variables. Later they might have modified, but it is not known to me. I am expecting individual variables. So, the schema of reading and writing are different. In such cases, we have two types of schemas, writer schema, reader schema. Writer schema, whoever is writing, they followed an array of three integers in a mark column. What is the reader's schema expecting? In place of marks, I am expecting three individual integers. So, reader schema is different, writer schema is different in this example. So, the differences between both must be resolved as follows. You understood the difference, right? Between reader schema and writer schema, we identified a difference. How do we resolve this difference? Various things, various things are there. If the two schemas do not match, then this is an error. What is this one? So, in order to match, one of the following statement must hold. First one, it is must that both schemas are arrays whose item types match. So, student number, it is of string say for example, student name, string and marks three integers right. So, is it matching between both of us in the application? Yes. In that case, I can go to the next one. When both schemas are maps, their value types must match. If they are arrays, data type of the items must match. If they are maps, the values must be matching. Why are not we talking about keys? Because in Avro, map means keys are always strings, right. Do not forget. And it must, it is must that both the schemas are enumerated data types, then their names must be matching. Moreover, both the schemas which are present, their sizes and names must be matching. Both the schemas are records, but with the same name. So, this is also to be there. It is possible either of these schemas is a union. It is must that both schemas have same primitive type. So, I cannot define one thing as integer, the other one somebody is expecting an array, it cannot. So, primitive data types should be followed. And now, make sure that the writer's schema may promote to the readers as follows. So, what, what are the writer's schema promoting? Int is promotable to long float or double. So, these are like rules of type casting. Long is promotable to float or double. The float is promotable to double. Then if both are records, it is possible that, so these are the rules for primitive data types. These are the rules for what if both of them are records. So, just go through these records rules. How do I resolve the differences if both of them are records. If both are enumerated data types, what should be done? An error occurs if the writer's symbol is not present in the reader's enumerated data type. If both are arrays, it should be the recursive, the algorithm should be applying recursively. If both are maps, what should happen? If in any case the readers is a union, but the writers one is not, then what should happen? Similarly, there is a case occurs when writers one is a union, but readers one is not. So, in such case, what should happen? It is recursively resolved against it and an error occurs. Even if doing multiple times the same kind of recursive approach, even after finishing multiple steps, if the schemas are not matching, then error occurs because the schemas could not be matched even after trying to promote various data types. So, in my case, can I change, I am expecting individual variables, the user might have written in an array. Can you convert an array into individual variables? 
definitely yes i can try to break it into individual pieces and try to put them in primitive data types so with multiple recursive operations the array which the writer has written can be converted into primitive data types which the reader is expecting so in my case that schema can be resolved into the schema what i am expecting so i might not ideally get an error when i am trying to read the avro file so we call this as schema resolution we will continue with the sorting of avro objects then we will see one more tool called as parquet in the next session